Hello, I love you. You're in my prayers. Wherever you are, whenever you find this video, we invite you not only to watch and listen, but to worship with us. This is a brief form of our worship service for June 14th, 2020. It includes a few announcements, a call to worship, prayer, readings, and a brief message. We're so glad that you were with us. Next Sunday will be Father's Day. We invite you to return again then. And we have good news. Our church council has decided that we will begin to gather again in person. And one of the ways we will do that is an option for getting together on Sunday mornings for a brief worship service and a time of fellowship beginning the 5th of July. I'll say more about that in my message, but I'd like to begin just with this. First, that we will continue to offer our worship by internet and by mail. We don't expect everyone to come to the church on Sunday mornings. In fact, we encourage those of you who would prefer not to come to please stay and worship safely at home. If you do come, don't expect it to be like it was before all of this started. We'll be taking very careful precautions to make sure everyone is safe. That will include social distancing and face masks and making sure that everything is clean around us and that we keep our hands clean either with san hand sanitizer or with washing our hands. But for those of you who do want to come and join us, we look forward to seeing you and those of you who prefer to stay home and stay safe, you are still a part of our fellowship. Our fellowship is not just those who come together on Sunday morning. As we've learned in the last three months, our fellowship consists of all of us who gather in spirit and in truth, whether it's in person or online, all of us who work together and worship together and learn together and grow together. We care about you. We will stay in touch. Our book group has chosen our book for July 14th. That's a Tuesday at 10 o'clock. We'll be discussing a book called The Tender Land. We invite you to pick it up and read along. The books we choose are usually both entertaining and informative. So we invite you to join us. I'd like to begin today with our call to worship, which is adapted from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us, and we belong to God. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks to God, bless God's name, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness extends to all generations. Let us pray. O living God, we give you thanks and praise that your love and your faithfulness extend to all generations. We thank you for your love and your faithfulness in the generations before us and in our own time and in times to come. We gather today as your people. We pray for those who are sick and hurting, for those who don't have what they need, for those who live lives of challenge because of the injustices that they face for those who perpetuate the injustices. Help us all to open our eyes and understand. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading today is from Exodus, chapter 19, verses 2 through 8. They had journeyed from Rephidim, 
entered the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken we will do. And then from Matthew chapter 9, 35 through 10, 1. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. May God bless this reading for our living and our understanding. Our local church is part of a group of churches, about 30 churches, called our association, the Eastern Association. And there are four associations in our conference. Our conference is the Southern California and Nevada Conference of the United Church of Christ. There are 39 of the conferences. And each year, delegates from about 100 churches come together, usually at Chapman University, for a couple of days of worship and business meetings and fellowship times and meals together and workshops and training events and celebrations. For those of us who go regularly, it's, it's something that we look forward to each year. We have local church friends and local church fellowship, but we also have conference friends and conference fellowship. And it doesn't take long. If you go to one sometime, you sit down at a table, and the expectation is that the person across the table is someone you can talk to. And it's interesting because you start up these conversations with people who may look very different from who you are, but you very quickly discover that their faith is very much like your own and their church is much like their own and their struggles and their concerns and their hopes are much like your own. And you find friends much more quickly than you might expect to. Well, this year, conference gathering is happening in a different way. We're not able to all gather in one place. So like many other things, we're going to have a Zoom meeting. We're going to have a, a Zoom seminar that holds the main business meeting. The reports that are usually presented to us, the budget we have to approve, and all that kind of work is, is being included in documents on the, uh, on the web page for the conference. And in the afternoon, there will be a time when we do a Zoom session where we can get together. They call it Zoom Fellowship, and it'll be very much like what we do at our local church, except for it will be our, our conference friends. It will be a good time, done in a different way. For the past three months, our church has had to meet in a different way. This way that we're doing right now, talking to each other through video, communicating through emails and Facebook and letters and phone calls, all these different ways that we're staying in touch and we've done quite well. 
Very soon we will begin meeting again in person. But I want to be clear that the fellowship consists of all of us and, and not just those of us who get together. And those of us who get together should expect things to be quite different. Our gathering on some, what, Sunday morning is not the main gathering of the church. This, these videos will continue. Our, our online worship services will continue. We'll continue to mail out to those who are not able to receive the, uh, the emails or the internet connections. That will continue to be our main service. And what happens on Sunday morning will be important, but it will still be an option and it will still be a supplement to our main service. And we'll start gathering 10 or 10.15 and 10.30 we'll go into the sanctuary, most likely, where we'll be able to hear the organ play and be able to hear Debbie sing and I'll do a little preaching and we'll do some praying together but it'll be a brief service. We probably won't sing hymns together. There will still be those wonderful videos that we won't see at church. You'll still get to go home and, and watch those and discover the wonderful things that I've found to share for you during the week. And the sermon that I preach on Sunday morning is likely to be a condensed form of what I say to everyone here. But then we'll go out and our fellowship will probably be outside. Everything we do will be done in a way that is as safe as it can be. We'll wipe down surfaces before you arrive. You'll see some signs around. We'll ask everybody to maintain that six foot distance. We'll ask people to wear their masks most of the time. We may make some exception to that for people who are hard of hearing and depend on a little bit of lip reading in order to understand. But when we don't have masks, that means the space is that much more important. We'll be checking temperatures as you arrive. But it'll still be us together. We'll be gather, together to praise God and we'll be together to love one another and catch up and build our friendships and, and restore the progress on making friends. So for those who are able to be there, I look forward to seeing you again. For those who aren't, remember, you are still very much a part of us, and I, I look forward to talking to you again also. And all of us on the church staff look forward to those continuing phone calls and connections. But what I'd like to talk about today is related to that, but it's a bit different. It's why we get together. Why do we gather as a church? Why do we choose to remain connected to each other even when we can't gather? What, what is it that happens in a church that's so important? And to discuss that, I'd like to start with Moses. We, we know the story of Moses about how Moses called the people and led the people out of slavery in Egypt. And there was a time of freedom and restoration that happened with the people and it happened during a time of plagues and epidemics and that's taking more significance to us now. We are now also in a time of justice and freedom and it's happening in the midst of a time of plagues and epidemics. But God led the people out using Moses. And God overcame the power of the Egyptians so the people could go free. And they came to the wilderness of Sinai, they came to the foot of Mount Sinai, and they camped there, and God spoke to Moses, and he told them this, first, remind them of what I've done for you. Remind them about how I overcame the Egyptians. Remind me them of how I carried you like an eagle on eagle's wings. One of the reasons we come together is to be reminded of what God has done for us, for you and for me and for all the people around us. And God said, challenge the people to follow my commandments. So it came with a challenge and we come to challenge each other. And it came with a promise. If you obey my voice, God says, you will be my chosen people. You will be a holy nation. All 
the earth is mine, says the Lord. But if you hear my voice and follow, you will be a blessed people. And Moses gathered the people together and presented to them the reminder of what God had done, presented them to them the challenge to follow God's way, and presented to them the promise, and they responded as one. We gather to hear the reminder of what God's been doing for us. We hear to be challenged. We, we gather to hear that promise. And we gather to respond as one, to answer as one. But what does it take to answer as one? When we gather together, there's an awareness that is kind of on the edge of our awareness. We don't really pay attention to it very often, but it makes a difference that when you're sitting in the pew and I'm up front talking, that there are other people who are listening. It would feel much different if it was just the two of us in the room and I were to talk in that way. But we are all listening together, even right now as we're apart from another. We are all listening together. We're thinking about how other people would respond and how we all respond together. When we get together for a business meeting, whether it's in the local church or at the conference gathering or just in the parking lot where we're talking about church business, there's usually somebody talking and presenting information, but the real action is going on around the table or around the room as we watch how each other is responding. We watch the, the smiles and the frowns and the times when people sit up and the times when people sit back and cross their arms. We are communicating with each other so we can reach a common understanding as to what God would have us do and what we are going to do to respond to God's will. We gather together so we can answer as one. Jesus went about all the cities and villages proclaiming God's news and casting out demons and healing people. And he, he called the disciples together and he gave them authority over the demons and he gave them the authority to cure sicknesses and illnesses. And Jesus sent them out, and they went out. We gather together because Jesus calls us together. And we gather together to hear the good news of the kingdom of God, the realm of God, which is so well expressed in the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The kingdom of God, the realm of God, is that gathering of people who are listening for God's will and who are willing and ready to respond and follow. God's will be done. And we gather also to understand what our task is, to understand what Jesus is sending us to do, and to receive the gifts and perhaps just the authority to do what needs to be done. Jesus gave them the authority to cast out unclean spirits. And we don't think, perhaps in our modern era, in terms of demons in the same supernatural way that they may have been thought of in, a, in previous centuries. But still, we see what that points toward, that there are still demons in our society. There are still demons within us. Our selfishness, our willingness to look at other people who are not a part of our own same racial or ethnic or national group, the people on the other side of borders, and value them somehow less even though that they are children of God. Our own selfishness. We are given the task of challenging the demons within ourselves, but also the demons in the world. And we go out happily to do that. And Jesus was a healer. He was concerned with making people well in body, mind, heart, and spirit. And he gave his disciples 
the authority and the task of, of doing the same thing. Again, we sometimes think of healing as laying on of hands and the curing of a particular disease, but this health crisis that we're having right now is one that's best controlled and best responded to by our whole society working together to control it. Each of us that does the right thing makes it safer for everyone. I wear a mask for you, you wear a mask for me. We keep that distance between because we care about each other and because we care about the people around us. That is the part of the task of bringing healing, of curing illness in our time. So why do we gather together? We gather together so that we can be reminded of what God has done for us, so we can hear God's challenge, so we can hear God's promise, and so that together, as one, we can answer, yes, God, we will do what we understand you would have us do. And we gather together because Jesus invites us and calls us to be together. And we gather together to hear the good news of the kingdom of God, the realm of God, that circle of people and circumstances in which God's will is done. And we gather together to share that with others and to make a difference in the world, to challenge the demons, the injustices, the selfishnesses, the short-sightednesses of our time. And yes, we still gather to help people be well in mind and body and heart and strength and soul. May we always be listening to that voice of Moses and that voice of Jesus inviting us together, inviting us into covenant with each other and sending us out into the world to be God's holy people. Let us pray. The loving God, though we are apart, we still gather together. And we still listen for what you have to say to us through the words of Moses and through the words of Christ. And most of all, through the words we hear from each other as we learn together and come to have one mind, which we pray may be your mind. May we discover your will and your promise for us. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. May God's love be with you wherever you are and wherever you go. May you find peace in the name of God who creates and provides, in the name of Jesus who teaches and heals, in the name of the Holy Spirit that works through all of us. Amen. Thank you for your time. Look forward to talking with you again next week. Take care.